Welcome back to the shop. This is actually going to be a 71 El Camino video, I think. But I thought I would kind of show everybody how things have been going in here. You'll note the new tail pan's in. Yeah, he's done an awful lot of work. So you can see the quarters are finally coming together. Yeah, so even though I haven't been filming it, stuff has been happening. And firewall's coming out real nice. So, in fact, we're already starting to talk about what kind of suspension we're going to do on this. Alright, so 71 is now in here. I am going to turn on some heat and uh, close that other door because it's chilly in here. It's chilly outside as well. So... Also looks like that tire is going flat. That's a bummer. I'm going to have to fill that. Uh, I know the pinion on this leaks, which unfortunately is not as easy as it was on that 8 and 3 quarter Chrysler. This is a, a crush sleeve seal, so we're going to have to be a little more careful with that. And I know I had another uh, like laundry list on this one, so we'll be back. Okay. Unfortunately, we just looked and... That pinion seal was changed just uh, four years ago, so pretty good chance that the pinion bearing is toast, but on this car, I don't think that's the rear end that's going to be in it long term anyway. And then uh, he did say that we got some clattering up here again. If you recall, this was just a used motor off the floor that we cleaned up and threw in, so at least he could drive this until it's time to restore it. So... I think we'll go ahead and just pop these guys off again and see which one backed out this time. As much as we suspected, it's actually a bearing that's bad. See the wiggle? So, eh, you know, I think for now, we'll go ahead and try to change the seal and deal with that for now, but this rear end's going to need replaced. Because we're not going to put money into rebuilding a 10 volt. Okay, I'm getting ready to pull that. Um, for whatever reason, this was super loose. So, I know it's not correct. I know we're supposed to put in a new crush sleeve and rebuild it and relash the pinion. Do all of that. I totally understand that. This axle only has to just work for a little while until this car's turn. So... What we're going to do is change the seal, clean everything as best we can, and we're going to just go for that point where you feel like you're going to start crushing the pinion. That's as far as we're going to go. So let's see how this works. I didn't want to come off, but we got it. So now we're going to take the new seal, which like I said was $30, and go compare it. You know, see what's what here. Step the first. Making sure, yeah, that's the right diameter. Now let's go see if it's the right heel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, well, why not throw it around, but yeah, that's the one. So, okay, let's get at it. It's going to be messy. Okay, we're letting her drip. We ain't this bearing, and it looks pretty fine. Let's get... Some light going here and the race looks fine so maybe we'll be okay as you can see there's you know obviously I can't check the inside bearing just the outer but at least the outer looks okay you can see that's the part that got crushed you know for the crush washer because it actually measures you know from this surface pushing on that pushing on that crush washer all the way back to the other bearing which is loaded on the pinion and then you know setting the preload and everything is by crushing that washer unfortunately we're we're not gonna be able to get that fancy there's no point in doing this until this is kind of done dripping because you really need all these surfaces to be pretty clean to get that seal to actually work i don't know how fun this part is but you gotta fill her back up so we got her back together. She's not dripping yet. Of course, we're only just now filling her back up. 
And well, we took a wild guess on the preload. If this bearing doesn't live very long, that's fine. This rear ends, it's on its way out anyway. Okay, so we're back on the ground. He was soaping these up looking for air leaks. And the bead on this one leaks. That you can see it. So he's got to reseal that one. Not the end of the world. So let's get back to it. Okay, so he said there's a little clattering going on. So getting ready to yank these valve covers. I still got to pull the bolts on this one. We'll get those off and we'll take a look and see what's what. This one's backed off uh, uh, rocker nuts before. So we'll see if it did it again. Okay, we haven't looked at it yet. But one thing to look for is... All of those guys being roughly the same thread count up. And honestly, they all, that side looks fine. Let's take a look at this side. If I remember right, this is the one that's had problems with them backing off in the past. Hmm. No, everybody looks pretty fine. There's something fishy going on here. I'll see what that is. But yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get in here and take a, Take a little closer look. Okay. Well, we, we're we standing at a funny angle, but you can see this here. You can see that that's only owned by one or two threads, and that's not normal. So, let's take a look at that. Okay, so at this point, we have intake op open, but exhaust starting to go on number one, which means we're 180 out, so I'm going to start on number six. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop the locks off of these guys, get those off, put a poly on. And we're gonna do the same setup that you've seen me do in other cars. The beauty of the poly lock is once we're locked, these shouldn't back out anymore. So that's the hope anyway. And we'll just go cylinder by cylinder. That's why we yank the plugs. Just makes it easier. I'm always worried I'm gonna gonna strip or tear out that bolt trying to turn them over with compression so it's a man or sauce manifold easy to pull the plugs why not hey okay, remembering that we started at top dead center of the fire stroke or compression stroke of number six um and i'm just chasing the firing order turning it 90 every time so we did six five i'm doing seven right now and then it'll be two and then we'll start back at one and go through and all I'm doing right now is setting the polys to just zero lash, giving them a quarter. I'm not locking them down yet. And then we're going to rotate the engine a couple times, let all the lifters bleed down, and then go back through the cycle again. Only this time we'll start at one. And we'll walk all the way through. And we're going to set all of these for zero lash plus half turn. And then lock them. And then this should be nice and quiet. And during the same time, He's already popped and redone the tire. I was just turning it off when he was going to tell us that. So he's got it resealed. It's the whole point of having a tire machine in it. Okay, so these are now all adjusted. We're about ready to fire her up. Got to throw valve covers back on. It's always worth getting nice gaskets so you can keep reusing them. But uh, one of the things I wanted to point out is you'll notice... Almost exactly the same amount of threads poking out of every one. Now, if this was a machined head, you know, an aftermarket aluminum head, or a head that's been machined for screw-in uh, studs, I would expect them to be within a quarter thread of each other because it's a machine known surface height. And, you know, you know how many threads per inch, you know how long the valves are, everything should be perfect. This is a cast head stock older some of those may have been pushed in a little further may not have been pushed in as far some of them may have been pulled some of the valves may sit a little higher because you know i don't know if this head has hardened seats so the fact that everybody is looking within a thread of each other that's a that makes us feel a little better okay so he's throwing that tire back on just got the spark plugs in and the wires on just hooked the battery up and let's give everything a once over before we hit the key or anything. Always look and see, did you unplug something because it was in your way? Although, honestly, on this car, there just wasn't much. Just this oil dipstick. 
And this, of course, we had unplugged. Um, yeah. One, three, five, seven. Two, four, six, and eight. So, yeah, wires are where they go. Well, belts feel pretty good. I you know, should be able to just barely turn it. And, uh, yeah, so we'll get her fired up as soon as he gets that tire on. Okay. I just reached in and gave it a pump shot because we don't remember if this car starts easy or if it doesn't start easy. But we just loaded that tire so we can torque it. And let's see if we hear anything weird. I think we've accomplished our tasks. This is uh, the 71 El Camino project. This one's a ways down the road, but he does like to drive the the clunkers, you know, especially it's Minnesota, you know, <laughs> especially right now it keeps snowing and then not snowing, snowing and not snowing. So you don't want to drive anything nice right now. So it is kind of fun to drive something before you spend all your time and money on it. So at this point, he's just retorquing everything now that the tires don't leak. So we're gonna hand it over to ShopRex and thanks for watching. And remember, even ShopRex needs to pay attention to what he's doing.